There's going to be enough vaccine to go around to get people vaccinated in this country, everybody who wants one, uh, by mid-year, let's say, um, at the latest we've heard. And then this Pfizer story uh, comes out. And I'm wondering if that changes the calculus at all for why these stocks that Josh laid out, cyclical stocks, uh, small cap stocks, have been moving. Well, um, the, the vaccine progress that we get every single day, obviously we know that's a good thing. Uh, we don't know how much is going to be administered, but I mean, Pfizer alone said 1.3 billion doses next year. Who knows what the U.S. is going to get? Who knows what's going to happen with Moderna, with J&J? J&J could be the positive surprise in terms of dosage, by the way. We just don't know. But what we do know is that we're making progress. And it is very positive from the healthcare side of things, as we talked about last week, obviously. But from an investor, you're asking me as an investor, and what does it mean? It means you're going to see better GDP growth next year. It means you're going to see better S&P 500 earnings next year. So let me just give you the numbers, right? So GDP expectations are 3.8% for next year. Could we see a 4 or 5% handle? Absolutely. Wouldn't be surprised at all. If you on earnings look at the uh, S&P 500 consensus for next year, 23.5 uh, 23 rather, wouldn't be surprised to see a 30 handle on that number. And I think, look, the, the market is a forward-looking indicator. This is one of the reasons why we're up 64% from the March lows. But I don't see any reason whatsoever, given that we expect better growth, maybe even a little bit higher inflation as well. Maybe that does lead to some um, sustainable uh, performance in the value slash cyclical but sectors. You... But again, what... What, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, but again, I don't want to be all in on cyclicals. I want to own that barbell. I, have, I would not change that strategy at all. Well, I got you because, I mean, look, Morgan Stanley's out today saying, and this is a quote from a report today, if the U.S. government cannot secure more doses of the Pfizer vaccine in first half of 21, then our expectation that the U.S. population could be vaccinated by mid-2021 is at risk. I mean, everybody's estimation would be at risk if there's not going to be enough supply of the vaccine. That's going to throw investment judge, uh, thesis. Judge, yes, I'm, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not a Trump guy. You know. You know that. Um, in defense of of the president uh, or the president's people, more likely, this is not that they passed on the extra doses from Pfizer because they're stupid. They knew that there were th at as many as three, if not more, competing vaccines all coming out within the same timeline, and they wanted to diversify the risk in case they went all in on Pfizer and either Pfizer had a manufacturing problem or had an efficacy problem. No or one whatever. has suggested otherwise. They wanted to. They, no one has suggested yeah, otherwise, so including I, I do Dr. Think... Gottlieb this morning, who said, use the words, spread the risk. The, the, Neither that's here right. nor there. I think there'll be enough, is my point. Okay, that, that's all that matters, enough. right? That's all that matters. Either there's going to be enough or there's not. To me. It's going to push the timeline of the reopen uh, out more or it's not. That's, I think, what we're talking about, yeah, John Nigerian. I think you're right. But even, if, right. But, even, but, even if it's, but even if it's pushed out a quarter or two, it's still coming, Scott, right? So A quarter okay, or two is a long period wanna... of time. Well, for on the healthcare side, of course, but from an investment point, now. and from a and from a from an investment point of view, it would not change my my strategy, my process, because I believe we're going to get back to some sort of normalcy. I don't know what that looks like, but we're going to get back to some sort of normalcy. Is it second half of 2021? Is it 2022? But that's why you always want to have diversification. And the point of it is, is that we are seeing a recovery. I mean, look, just yesterday alone, the business roundtable, the fourth quarter business confidence was the highest level since second quarter of two, uh, 2019. That means profits are going higher. CapEx is going higher. Okay. Hiring is going so let me lower. Ask you this. So let me so, ask or you higher, all this. rather. Unemployment is going let, lower. Let, let me ask you all this. And <clears throat> Doc, I, I come to you. Are you all investing okay. like the pandemic is over in, as of mid-year 2021? Second half of 2021 is, is back to normal. I, I want to know. I mean, if that's the strategy, then that's, that's the strategy. Is that what you urge our viewers to do? Invest as, as if the pandemic is ending at the end of the first half of 2021. I do believe that, that it will be ending at, uh, at the end of the first half. In other words, by June of next mm -hmm. year, Scott. Um, I can't tell them how they should invest because I'm not an investment advisor. But I'll tell you what I'm doing, and you already know. Look at my disclosures. I'm in all the epicenter reopening stocks, or at least a lot of them. I'm in a lot of tech stocks. Uh, if Steph wants to call that a barbell, I'm not arguing with her. That's a barbell. Um, I also, Scott, 
we've put ten and a half billion to Josh's point um, into Sanofi, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson. I mean, it's not just a one bet. Fauci is right uh, that Operation Warp Speed is ten and a half billion dollars, spreading the risk across multiples. Now, the really good news today, Scott, of course, it is that that woman over in the UK, the ninety-year-old grandmother, got the first dose in the UK. Be Big thumbs up to them for that. The really great news, though, is that when you look at this emergency youth authorization, uh, that 92 pages uh, that was filed, that says that it's as effective on the older population as it is on the younger population, and that it, it's at least 95 percent and maybe even 97 percent. So those are the really good news here, Scott, with particular the Pfizer uh, BioNTech uh, vaccine. So that's fabulous news, and that means that we're likely to see a much better rollout in the second half of 2021.